Another way to summarize data is with what is called the five number summary. This five number summary helps us see how spread out the data is and kind of where the chunks of data falls. Let's first talk about the parts that make up this five number summary. As you might imagine, there are five parts. As we find these five parts, it's important that the numbers are put in order first. If you don't put the numbers in order, none of this will work. So the first part of the five number summary is pretty straightforward. It is the minimum, or the smallest value. The second value in the five number summary is called quartile 1. Often we'll abbreviate it with Q1. And it is the middle of the lower half of the data. So if we just looked at the bottom half, the middle of the bottom half is our quartile 1. And as we look at that middle of bottom half, we don't count the median, or the middle. We'll get to that in a minute, if the median is a value, if it is a value. Now, the third number in the five number summary is that median. I told you we'd get to that. The median is the middle number of the entire set. Then we have quartile 3, which we abbreviate Q3. And similar to quartile 1, it is the middle. But this time, it's the middle of the upper half of the data. And again, we don't count the median. If it is a value. And then the last value of the five number summary, the fifth value, is the maximum. So for example, if I were to ask a bunch of people how many pets they have, what is the number of pets they own, we might get a data set that looks like this. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, and 11. Notice these are already in order. Remember, the numbers must be in order first before we actually find the parts of these five number summaries. I usually start actually with the middle value, the median. If I were to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there's 10 values. To split this in half would put five values to the left and five values to the right. That's where my median is going to be located. But since it's not actually a number in the middle, it's between two numbers, we just average them. We'll say 2 plus 3 divided by 2 to get our median, which is 5 divided by 2, or 2.5. So the median is 2.5. Then I'm going to find my quartiles. In the bottom half, there are five numbers. And I notice that the third number, then, is in the middle of the bottom half. That is my quartile 1. Similarly, on the top half with five numbers, the third number is in the middle of those. That is my quartile 3. And then finally, I can just pull off the ends that the minimum value and the maximum value are on the ends. And so that tells me, then, that my five number summary is made up of the numbers 0, 1, 2.5, 4, and 11. And I know in order, those are the minimum, quartile 1, the median, quartile 3, and the maximum. Another thing that I can see off of the five number summary is it splits the data into quarters. I would be able to see that 25% of the numbers fall between 0 and 1. 25% of the numbers fall between 1 and 
25% of the numbers fall between 2.5 and 4, and 25% of the numbers fall between 4 and 11. We've split this up into quarters, and that's where we get the name of quartile from for quartile 1 and quartile 3. Now, for the example that we did together here, we just could kind of look and visually see where the middle was because there were so few numbers in the data set. But if there is a larger data set, let's say with 3,452 elements in it or something, some large number of data sets, we wouldn't want to go through and count to find the middle and to find the quartile 1 in the middle of the bottom half and quartile 3 in the middle of the top half. Instead, what we can do is we can use the locator method. The locator method says, OK, Q1 is above 25% of the data. That's what we just said. It splits it into quarters. Similarly, the median is above 50% of the data. And Q3 is above 75% of the data. So using that fact, let's look at an example where a data set has, let's say, 242 values. If I want to figure out where Q1 is located, it is the, and we take 25% or 0.25 as a decimal, and multiply it by the 242 values, that gives us 60.5. Similar to how with the class width we want to round up, we round this up, always up, to find 61, the 61st value in this data set is that first quartile. So we take the 25% times the number of values. Rounding up, if it's a decimal, rounding up tells us where the location is of the first quartile. Now be careful here. This is not saying 61 is the first quartile. I have to go to my data set and find the 61st value. That 61st value then becomes my first quartile. Similarly, if I wanted to find the median, median is the, well, the median's above 50% of the value. So we take 0.5 times 242, and that's 121. Now, that's a whole number. So instead of rounding up, we found the median is sometimes between two values if there's an even number of values, like in this case. So if we get a whole number, with the locator method, that means the median is between 121, 121st value, and the 122nd value. And so we would average those numbers together, similar to what we did with the 2 and the 3 in our previous example. Now be careful again. 121 and 122 are not the median. We have to go to our data and figure out what the 121st value is and the 122nd value is, and we average those values. It's not 121 and 122. That's the location of the median. Let's find the location of Q3. Q3 is above 75%, so we take 75% times the 242 values. When we do that, we get 181.5. And like I said, we'll round that up. It's the 182nd value in the data set is Q3, or the third quartile. And then obviously, the minimum and the max we can pull off directly from whichever one's the biggest or the smallest. The big thing to note, and we're going to make a note here in red, note. These give the location, not the value 
of Q1, the median, and Q3. So be careful. That just tells us where they're located. Then we have to go through the data and find the 61st value, 121st, 122nd, average them, and the 182nd value. And those values then become the quartiles and the median. These five number summaries provide a nice way to visually see in five quick numbers where each quarter of the data is. Helps us get an idea of the spread of our data.